Okay, apart from the fact that I probably have about six more weeks of temperatures that are, let's say, conducive to tolumnias also being outside before I schlep them in and out, let's talk about tolumnia troubles because, yeah, maybe they won't be around in the next video. <laughs> I have my handy dandy garlic alcohol and my paintbrush in case we see the beasties that are partially responsible for my tolumnia decline. I would like to say we're gonna rock down to Tolumnia Avenue, but I'm gonna show them to you one by one because I also have two that are not in baskets. They are in semi-hydro or were in semi... Anyway, let's look at some Tolumnia troubles. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. <laughs> We're gonna start right out of the gate with the one that I consider poorly, while it's still got a little bit of green on it. There's another one which I will show you just now. <clears throat> I might just bin it after this video, but not before we have a look at it. This is my firm Dalmatian. All of my Tolumnias were pretty much decimated in the scale apocalypse of 2021 when I completely dropped the ball and they got infested. And I've been rescuing them since then. I normally have my Tolumnias on the west trellis of my blooming alley in the cul-de-sac because it looks pretty, but it wasn't effective because I didn't see the scale attacking my Tolumnias. So, Firm Dalmatian is probably history. I have not had any of my Tolumnias on the trellis. They have been under my supervision all summer. Up against the hedge, my Tolumnia Avenue, just to make sure that if I see anything that is white, I don't care if it's dust, I come and I treat it and I paint it with some garlic alcohol. This one always seemed to have scale on the roots and scale on tolumnia roots, oh joy. Good luck trying to get those off, even though I have managed to get them off, doesn't mean that the scale isn't still around where I can't see it. The biggest fan here, it has failed and died off completely, which I wish I could have picked out sooner, but I didn't get around to filming this sooner, and I wanted to show you. Because if firm Dalmatian is not going to be around when it comes to putting the tolumnias inside, now you know, now you know. She just hasn't really recovered from the stress of the scale. Simple as, that's all there is to it, even though I'm being pedantic about it. She never grew her structures back to size. There's always a little bit of dawdling with her. So I don't think she's going to make it. It's going to be a tough ask for her to make it through the winter with the stressful conditions, with the low temperatures. But here she is. I'm gonna keep on trying while I still have the weather conditions. Yikes. <laughs> yep, I hear you and I agree with you. Yikes. This is Red Devil and well, when I see a Tolumnia getting to this stage, it's history, it's just a matter of time. I could bin her right now, but once again, until the weather conditions don't change, I'm going to keep her. And you can see how the scale, and this is all dead scale now, but you know, in the structures, they're dead because last week I treated them with garlic alcohol. It's just annoying that I never managed to, let's say, eradicate them completely. So be on the lookout for your tolumnias if you grow them or if you plan to grow them. Scale is a detriment to the health of your tolumnias and even the roots don't look that great. But like I said, I'm going to keep going. A little bit of alcohol here and there. See what she does. I just doubt very, very much that there's any coming back from this. So if we don't see Red Devil anymore in the future, now we know. It is unfortunate because I really like the color of these blooms. This is Pink Brished, one of the more vigorous, <coughs> cough, cough, <laughs> tolumnias that I used to have in my collection. And I say that already in the past tense because again, the structures are very desiccated. There's not much life left in them. The growth that she tried to grow this season right here, well, I've been trying to treat that as well with garlic alcohol and she is free of scale. She is trying another new growth. But when I see the bracts like this down here, all dried, hard, and woody already. I feel that this tolumnia is also history. So my tolumnia schlepping in and out chores are gonna be extremely minimal. We shall have to wait and see, but there is nothing really much left to work with. I don't see viable roots either, so everything is desiccating. 
and the new growth I don't think stands a chance. Please prove me wrong, Pink Brished. I would be so happy to be wrong. This is Pink Beige. Now, she is also quite vigorous, as you can see. At least she's still got a lot more structures, but they're also all very desiccated. And they are still red from the anthocyanin, from the cold stress that she endures during my winter months. Unfortunately, she never greens up, even though she's not in bright shade. Look at this here. What do you think you're doing with my Tolumnia? So just as well that we've got the garlic alcohol right here because paint job, paint job. But you see her structures are desiccated. She did grow this new growth right here, which is fine, but I'm waiting for roots. And you can see again, the woody bracts at the bottom. How on earth are weak roots supposed to push into that? I missed so far all my tolumnias from the top leaves and everything. Very diluted fertilizer, very diluted cow mag, but I missed all the structures because I still can. I don't know if you can hear it on the mic. I do have quite a stiff breeze going today. So they've had their second misting. Now, you can clearly see we are probably fighting a losing battle. The second new growth is tucked away in there. And uh, yeah. Don't know what to tell you, don't know what to tell you, with the exception that I might as well do this video now because there probably won't be a video of, oh, boo-hoo, my Tolumnia's died, unless I do a video of why my Tolumnia's died and give all the reasons that spans several years despite my best efforts of trying to revive them. Lots of scale on this one. <laughs> Now, as I'm not sure what bodies are dead and what aren't, I'm just going to give all the crevices a little bit of a spray. And as I touch all the crevices and all the structures, I am telling you, they feel very, very stiff and very desiccated. So it's not just a visual desiccation. It feels very desiccated as well. Sometimes the visual isn't exactly reality, but in this case, desafortunadamente, it is. Now I'm just going to wash my hands if any of these bodies were alive before I get the next one. Ick. This is the Gyrac Flyer Brown Spot. Hmm, looking much, much better, right? Same amount of light influence, even though the blooms here are yellow with brown. The others looked a little bit red because of anthocyanin and cold damage, including the same light influence. Then this one is looking pretty good. I know I have seen my Tolumnias look so much better when I look at footage past, but I am grateful for what I see here. At least, at least the two new growths that she grew this season, there's one here and one here. At least they're looking good. They're looking lush. And you can see at least this one is growing new roots. So that is why the structures look hydrated because we've got active and functioning roots. I'm hoping that brown flyer will stick around in the collection and then we can see her beautiful blooms again one day. Not the next bloom cycle. No way, too weak. If she decides to push a spike, I am going to be taking that spike off the moment the buds separate from the spike, not letting her bloom. Whatever it takes to keep her in the collection so that I don't have to erase my Tolumnia file completely. <laughs> I have one more in a basket, so I'm just going to end on a high note because, oh dear, oh dear, let's show you what is going on with Tolumnia pomegranate. <clears throat> yeah. So far, my semi-hydro experiment doesn't appear to be working. She is in lava rock only. I used to have Akadama at the base thinking that I could get the roots to grow nicely into that media. And well, at the beginning of the season, I switched the media out to lava rock only. All the roots were dead, blah, -dee blah. Look at this. At least we have one structure that is looking somewhat okay. Oh, but she is a fraction of her former self. I have really done a number on this orchid, but I'm going to persevere. I'm going to push through. Yeah, she's growing a second new growth right here. That means this growth is done. However, if we can get some healthy roots down into the lava rock, that would be awesome. And then, of course, you can see everything that died in the middle, thanks to me. And yeah, it, this growth here is trying a new growth, but it's already showing drying bracts. 
and those usually mean that that growth is done because it's also extremely desiccated. There is no scale issue with this one ever, so full responsibility here. This is all my doing. Another new growth was right here, but you see how dry that bract is. Oopsie daisy, this is going to be a tough call. Having said no scale damage, hello, what are you? Okay, no, you're just a white, obnoxious spot of sorts. That is not scale. These don't live anywhere near the other ones. So yeah, brown bracts at the base of Tolumnius makes it very, very difficult for a Tolumnia to grow roots. That's too heavy of a material to push those roots through. We've got some activity down here in the base there, but all I'm looking at and spying are those white roots and boom! I spoke too soon. Okay, I will move on to the next one in semi-hydro, but not before I treat this one. Having said all that, dang, not happening, not happening. Gonna do my best to revive this one, even though this lead right here may be lost completely. There is still some chance over here. I don't have an ID for this Tolumnia. She was named by an orchid ninja. Her name is Carmen. So seeing as the two live next to each other, <clears throat> we are just going to do a little bit of a eau de garlic as well, just to put a little bit of the odor here in case anybody decides to jump across and uh, migrate to this orchid because that, no, we don't want that. So Carmen was also put into just lava rock at the beginning of the season. And while she looks very desiccated, there is a little bit more hope with Carmen because she's also trying to grow some roots over here, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, hope is relative. High hopes, no, but there is hope. At least her structures aren't as desiccated and aren't as dry, and some have already migrated. Dang. You have to be on top of them. I'm telling you, these Tolumnias are all in my line of sight. They have been all summer, just so that I am right on top of it if I see something. And well, how quickly things can change in a span of 24 hours. Wow. Is there anything in here? Nope, that's fine. So yeah, here we go. Still working with Carmen. These tips here that are brown, that's cold damage. That is not something that has happened this season. That was last, probably last year or a accumulation of two cold winters. They don't like my temperatures. And by that, I mean 14 degrees Celsius. I don't like those temperatures either. Anyway, last but not least, let me show you one that is finally seems to be the star of the season. <laughs> This is the Tolumnia that has a beautiful fuchsia, almost red bloom, with a little white chain around her lip, and uh, I call her, you know, with a white necklace. It's a no ID, but this way I remember what Tolumnia this is. Michael McCarthy called her a very long name. I don't know what it is, but I like it. That is the name Michael McCarthy gave her. <laughs> now she looks extremely red on the camera. That is interesting. Something I need to take note of because sometimes our naked eye cannot see what the camera is telling us. So there may be a little bit too much light stress on her. Bright shade, no direct sun. She is much greener than she appears on camera, but I'm gonna really pay attention to what I'm seeing and I'm gonna pull her into deep shade just so that I can avoid that stress factor. Interesting, interesting. And here is why I left her for last. She's got a little spike. So we're gonna see those blooms again. And this is what I mean about roots. If you don't have the brown bract at the bottom, roots can grow. And she has two gorgeous root systems from this season, from two pretty okay growths. If I'm going to let her bloom, we will see the blooms. I haven't made my mind up yet because in my opinion, I don't want to stress my Tolumnias out if I have any hope of saving them. And this tag is annoying me, but anyway, if I have any hope of saving a Tolumnia or Tolumnias, then the last thing I want to do is induce any form of stress. And that would mean blooms. But at this stage, 
I cannot cut the spike. That would be premature because if a Tolumnia or any orchid is struggling, the first thing they will do is send energy into producing another spike. So in this situation, the hormones are geared towards, I want to bloom, I want to bloom. At this stage, I don't see this one as a stress spike because she has a fantastic root system. But if I were to intervene now, that would be far too soon because the hormones are still raging towards, we want to bloom. So once the buds separate from that spike, I can cut it off if I see that the orchid can do with a rest as opposed to blooming for us, which is a pity, but it would be lovely to at least have one Tolumnia in my collection, maybe two, if I can get greedy with the semi-hydro ones, maybe four. <laughs> but yeah, on a positive note, I leave you with my Tolumnia. I don't know what it is, but I like it. I hope there were some little pointers in this video that were helpful to you. If you have any questions, I can point you to videos that give you more detailed description of their history. I just thought it was relevant to show you three Tolumnias that I feel won't be around that much longer and I don't want to make a big hoopla unless I can do a video that is a teachable moment and that it makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. I'm back. <laughs> I have two more. I keep forgetting them because they are not in the Tolumnia Avenue for reasons. These are being pampered and protected indoors. These are the ones that I got from Anonymous. And this specific one is Orange Spread, which did bloom for us. Orange Spread, <laughs> even though I took the spike off prematurely, it's trying to grow a new growth, which is looking lovely. You see, this is the color that healthy Tolumnias have, even when exposed to bright light. And this is what healthy Tolumnia roots look like. Isn't that awesome? I love that visual, absorbing. It's awesome. This makes me feel so much better. And let me bring to you Spotty. Just to show you, Spotty also bloomed. Yes, the spike was then cut prematurely. I wanted to see if they were correctly labeled. Also from Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. I still have your Tolumnias in my collection. And I would say they're doing well, despite the fact that Spotty is a bit wonky on this growth. But I left it to do its thing. It was important to establish the orchid as opposed to me fussing with how I wanted it to grow into the basket. So clearly, direction of light over here. But Spotty is <clears throat> growing, oh, what is this, an overachiever? Hang on a second. Let me move, there we go, these tags. Spotty is growing two new growths. What is going on here? I mean, I'm not complaining, it's awesome. And Spotty's root system is wonderful, although it seems to be going a little bit everywhere, a little bit like Einstein's hairdo. <laughs> but the roots are viable and some of them are absorbing. That is super important. And just because Tolumnia roots are such a beautiful sight to behold when healthy. Look at those root tips. Ooh, so good. Now, I forget the fact that I've already signed off on this video. <laughs> but yeah, these guys live inside, protected from anything that could attack them. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will see a lot more of them in the future. And if you stayed to watch this little add-on clip, thank you so much. And I do apologize, Anonymous, that I almost, almost forgot them. Thank you. Take care. Bye.